Hello, everyone. I'm Annie McDonald. I, I am an, now an author, but uh, my first love is interviewing authors, learning more about them. I believe the more that we get to know them, the more we get really into their books and even wanting to collect them. And that's what happened with uh, Jennifer and I. I fell in love with her and I ended up buying all of her books in one day. <laughs> so uh, this is the year I will be reading all of them. I'm, t I'm slowing back on book reviews so I could have time for reading books that um, I really want to read. And it's not that I don't want to read the ones I have read, but ones I'm just buying myself and choosing to read. There's a big difference uh, than when somebody asks you to interview them or uh, review their book. So well, I'm here for Well Read Magazine. And um, what this is for, it's authors that I feel sparkle, radiate. They're more than an author. There's so many other things that they offer in the creative community and, and that are special. And Jennifer Ann Gordon is one that I chose. For this year i was very excited when she said yes because she's very busy with all of the things she does so <laughs> um before i tell you what i'm going to be asking her it will only be 10 questions um i do want to go over her her bio just real quick oh my god this picture your You're website so sweet your website is amazing i can't take complete credit for that uh my husband is amazing and he's an amazing photographer and he takes a lot of pictures of me can anyone see this look at this yeah so that oh that was actually done by uh an artist on instagram who does a lot of like horror portraits of people yes yeah, is matt max yeah. underscore stark nine yeah i mean that's that's just that's you it's That's so really great. you. I it's know, like, I know. Like the it's, thoughts going into your brain. I mean, it's like when I saw that picture, I was just like, "Oh, well, that should definitely be my author photo because I've never looked um, better." Because it, it was a great artist representation. Uh, they they the wrinkles are somehow not there. They're replaced with like train tracks and trees and oh, I think things. it's. And it's truly going into your head where, yeah. where trees are growing. So your thoughts are growing. This means so, so much. This is awesome. If, if you write a biography, this has to be the cover. Oh, I love it so much. And I love that you have my website pulled up because I have like, there's like two bios on that page. There's like a quirky short one. The first one where it's like, I'm a ghost, scared of ghosts. Well, which one do you uh, want me to read? I mean, I don't, it doesn't matter. Because I can, can read, read the both. The, there's one that's like my Ooh, like, It's like a poem. Yeah, there's one okay, that's okay. poem, and then I, one that's like, oh, this is actually my... This is actually her bio. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to start with the poem, because everybody knows I love poems. Um, Jennifer was born a strange, pale, and quiet child. A ghost scared of ghosts. Originally from New Hampshire, she, she studied acting at the New Hampshire Institute of Art. She grew up to become an actress magician's assistant, artist, writer, dancer, and muse. And sometimes for me too, a muse. She currently haunts lonely places in New Hampshire, though she is not dead. And I'm sure when I pass on, I'm going to find you first. Oh, please do. My house is amazingly haunted with like benevolent uh, wonderful artist spirits because oh you could tell when you with the picture of your house yeah. last night um so we had been gone this is why the interview is going to last a long time last time we, <laughs> we were gone for um a couple days and we came back to our house and it's like it's new england so sometimes it smells like mice and i was like oh the house smells like mice and roman's like oh just spray the sage just because right. we like the smell of it so we sprayed it and then we do have a, a lovely ghost. Her name is Esther. She was a poet and a photographer and an artist. And she designed this house. And every time we spray the sage, she just- I was going to say, who came? Yeah, she just, she just keeps like pacing back and forth on our second floor. So we always just go like, Esther, we're not trying to get rid of you. I'm sorry. Like, it's just, it's not Right, right, nice. right. 
Like you're giving her space. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool that you're that you're open to that. I talk um, to her a lot. <laughs> pardon me? So I talk to her a lot. Like that's and really it, neat. It I, uh, weird. I just have like an open conversation with her when there's like knocking in the walls. I'm just like all right, Esther, because she was a writer, she was a photographer, and I feel like she picks up you. on, she, yeah, and I think she picks up on our creative energy in this house, so, like, when we're having our, when we're being, like, oh, it's going so well, she's active, and then when it's not going so well, because as writers and artists, You're like, a on. lot of times it's not going well. Right, right, right. Oh, my gosh, you know, um, over at Fort Eustis, they had Fort Monroe. I had friends that had to move out of their home because it was they had, it had ghosts, and then they had to close the whole fort because of ghosts. Like the army legit yeah. closed it. So like the, these things, they're true, and I think that's because it's the Civil War times. Certain times in history are so difficult. I think yeah. it's hard for. I think it's um, hard for energy to find a different. Place Plain. to be right so there's like we could do an entire show about this but i know you've got questions but yeah i think energy sometimes repeats itself over and over again which is why like our amazing ghost esther i hear her pacing and i always think she was probably writing a poem in her head that that's really neat and, and i bet when you're writing sometimes she comes through that's really interesting i hope she does and I her bet, photography was beautiful Maybe I have a ghost. <laughs> Maybe I that's the one saying, everybody has like a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a ghost. It's, it's just, just a ghost. A ghost. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm going to blame um, all of my uh, autoimmune things, all of my health issues from now on. I'm just going to go, oh, that's, that's, just, that's, that's just the ghost. That's just <laughs> she has very weak lungs. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I wish it was like just the ghost of me, you know, <laughs> I, I I don't have one pill and I'm like having like the worst spasms and I'm like, this has got to be a joke. Can't like it be in my system enough already. I need a ghost here to massage my legs and stuff. Oh my God. Can we sign up for that? There should be a I waiting know. list. That would be really cool. Uh, leg massagers, ghost leg massagers. Like a little Casper running around. Hey, hey, ghosts of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone will understand why we're talking about this. And I, I do truly believe in all of this. Uh, I was getting my infusion once in a private room. Where there was only two of us. And it was this girl, Liz. I didn't know her very well. But she was reading a Lin Linda Chamberlain or Laura Chamberlain book. Diane Chamberlain book. And I said, I'm sorry, but Liz, I have to tell you. There's a man that's looking over your shoulder reading with you. And she's like, oh, my God, that's my husband. He just passed away two weeks ago. Oh, I get chills all over. And I love that you just told that story because I think a lot of people don't know how you and I know each other. Because I'm like, I'm horror. And Annie is, you're not a horror <laughs> fan. So right. like, Well, I'm becoming one. You're, you are. But we met through uh, the most amazing community of writers I've ever met in my life, which is the grief writing community. Yes. Spearheaded by our loving friend and mentor, Diane Zina. Oh, I don't know what I would do without her. I hope, I mean, she has my book, so I'm hoping she has read the chapter I wrote about her. I'm not sure if she has or if I even read it to her. I might have done that. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, I wrote a chapter about her because... It all came to fruition because of her prompts. Yes. That got me writing. And I, I write everything so fast in those 15 minutes or 20 minutes. It's and the best. And it's, I always say, like, that's the best writing I ever do is in those, like, you have eight minutes. You're like, oh my gosh, I have eight minutes to <laughs> get out uh, my most important things. And I've, I've used a lot of the work that has come through her classes and through the grief writing community in general in my horror novels. Well, you're, oh, I mean, some of them. I'm they're just not like, like, it's like, I write horror. Everybody who knows, like, I also write crime, but I always come to it from a place of absolute human emotion. So my horror novels 
or they tend to be like grief based or uh, trauma based or addiction based or and and it, what it, it's so original, Thank so original. You. I mean, you're like a female Stephen King. Oh you my know, gosh. I, mean, I wish you, I was that tall. And look, I've been a reviewer for 20 years, you know. Um, but when I read, when I listen to what you've written or read it again, like when you put it in the in the group, I just melt uh, because it's horror. But, but it's, there's yeah. so much humanity in the horror. Yeah. That's what it is. It's the humanity that you put into it. And that takes a lot. That's a different style of writing. It is. And, you know, like, so I, I love horror. It's my first love. Horror, crime, too. That All, all of that. Right, right, that's, right. You and I, that's what I, we Yeah, I'm a crime over. person, it's like, too. It's a crime stuff. Um, but yeah, like, my love of horror, I always tell people, like, I'm not really going to write about a monster. But I, I do have a book coming out. August 1st, I'm just going to like low level plug it right now. It's called The Japanese Box and Other Stories. Uh, it was oh. kind of birthed out of a grief writing class. But oh, there that's there so is great. a story in there that might be about a werewolf or it might be about a woman not being able to have a baby. Oh, wow. So, like, I just feel like if people are going to read my work, they have to understand that, like, there's going to be some trigger warnings. Oh, yeah. A lot I mean, of emotional it's stuff. Me. It's, like, grief. It's Well, trauma. it's funny. Like, I was scared to put love letter to my children, which mm -hmm. I've been posting today everywhere. But the reason I'm doing that is so many, so much love is coming to me for writing such an essay. Because so many women have had had miscarriages and they, they kind of feel shameful or, you know, not mothers. But I'm like, no, 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 no. The second, you, the second you see that plus sign, you're taking care of your belly. You're already bonding. You're and I just feel like, so like, I, I know uh, this interview is going to come out on another day. It's going to be everywhere. But I want people to know that like you and I right now, Annie McDonald, Jennifer and Gordon are talking to each other on Mother's Day. So it's, oh, a, that's it's right. a complicated day. And I'm just like so happy to have you be such a, an amazing warm spirit oh, and, and loving friend and, and fan and lover of books. Oh my so. gosh. And, and lover of podcasts and Love and you and sending people to you. I just, oh. What I think you were so cute at the very beginning of this. You said you were a reader and a, a, and a lover of authors. So you were like a podcaster and an interviewer first and then an author after. And I was an author first and then a podcaster. Oh, after. that's so funny. And I, in podcasting and interviewing authors to me is just like, I love it so much. I feel like every time I talk to an author, it's like taking a master class. Yes. And yes. what to do and also what not to do. <laughs> I've learned so much over the it, years because even when there wasn't the, you know, where we could do it live, I was doing it on a blog because I, I was so nosy. Like I had to know things about authors, yeah. like beyond just the, Reviews. Oh my god! I love it. So I love that you just said that you were so nosy. That's like my favorite thing ever. So now I'm like, this is when we've got to like get into those ten questions. All right, let's get into those ten questions. Um, like, I do want fire. to say this though, real quick, uh, that you're an award-winning author, a popular host of Vox Vomitas, a podcast, which is wonderful. Yeah. Her novel, Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent, won the Kindle Award for Best Horror Suspense of 2020. Best Horror of 2020 from Authors on Air. I mean, look at this. These covers are outstanding. That's yeah, why that's they have to be. This is actually a picture of me. Oh, is it really? It is. That's why I had to Photoshop my tattoos out. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm wearing an antique wedding dress, and I was in a fake 
graveyard because I was an actor in a haunted attraction. That's amazing. Ah, I can't believe and you did that. my took this picture. And, and when I was writing this book, I just started looking at this picture and I'm like, that kind of tracks for the branding. And I never thought oh, it was totally. going to be on the cover until every single person I knew was like, well, it has to be the cover. But you know what would be cool if you were on all your covers? <laughs> no. I, I mean, all of, your, all of your, all of, all of your photos are exquisite. You and I, I mean, that's a, sweet. that's a strong word. They're very exquisite, but uh, you know, so she, we all know. Okay. So she's won a whole bunch of awards, I've won some. but her latest novel, pretty ugly. Let's see the cover. I, it has it's had two covers. There was is one. that a new cover? This is the here's the thing. All right, other cover I love so much. Oh, my but God. here's the thing I wrote Pretty Ugly, and it is not about COVID, it is about um, kind of a virus that can affect people's faces and cause a lot of scarring. So people start wearing masks. I wrote this before COVID. Cover was perfect. Then there got to be a lot of um, conversations politically about what a, who wears a mask. So this cover stopped selling. So I got a different cover. Uh, no, I, I understand. I like this cover too. A lot of this book actually takes place on, uh, and I don't think you can really see the new cover, but she, it's a... So yeah, woman, it looks like she's on a like, train. She, yes, and um, and half the book takes place, um, kind of after the world ends on a train ride through northern Italy. Oh, that's so cool! So I'm like, I love both covers so much. Um, and my main character in that book is a Instagram influencer, but she does costuming and book reviews. So she'll costume and makeup herself to be adjacent to whatever book review she's doing so that's that's really interesting because um like who i've always wanted to be but i can't do my own makeup oh i love doing makeup i mean i have my makeup here but i didn't have time to do it but um i i always love making my makeup different like i wish i could be the girl that sits there and puts my makeup on make it all different all the time which mm -hmm. i always do and be like oh yeah and then he approached her with the knife you know like <laughs> I love yes. that lady. Yes. I forget her name, but I love watching her. Her makeup is always different. It's always perfect. And she can talk while she's doing it about like something, things that are so specific. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's fun to watch this stuff. But that's how you would be, Jennifer. Oh, I that's mean, how you I, are. But, but, um, yeah, but I have a really hard time like um, doing my makeup in front of other people. Like, I, see, I, I know I, I went to school for theater. I was like a, like, quote unquote, professional actress for, mm -hmm. for many years. But I would get to the theater before anybody else because it took me so long to do my makeup because um, I have anxiety disorder. So a lot of times I'm shaking. Oh, okay. And so, like, doing my makeup, it would be like, and that's a mess. Uh, well, <laughs> so, like, I just need three hours to do it. I totally get it. I totally get it. I like fling stuff because I have I like it's called it's called Parkinsonese. So I like I tremor or sometimes I'll throw mm -hmm. stuff and it's just like oh my god. I've broken It's so hard phone. to be glamorous when you're shaking and throwing things all the time, Annie. <laughs> I know. I know it's crazy. But um I want everyone to know that you you you're into photography, paintings that are just so so stunning they thank you some of them speak to my life like you cannot even imagine um like i could i could write poems for them and i i'm not gonna lie a lot of um people tell you that. My, well no a lot of my paintings are titled after lines in certain poems that i did write so oh, the fact so that you cool. said that it just goes oh, oh she comes through it yes yes that speaks to my soul thank you thank you it, for seeing what it is it is it's very soulful oh my gosh very 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 nice um but there's a whole and then it's just everything that you do it just is it's a beautiful 
especially in our grief writing class. I'm telling you, if anyone wants to do grief writing, join us on Sunday because oh. you get to hear us read sometimes. And when Jennifer reads, it's it's just outstanding. Okay, you just give me chills everywhere. And I think, strangely, the grief writing, grief writing community has... I have never met a more talented group of writers. I know. It's like, and why does everyone not have a book? Every single person there should be a New York Times number one bestseller. I totally agree. Like, every, I mean, every piece, I go... Well, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And then somebody else reads, and I'm like, that's the most beautiful. No, thing no, I've that ever was heard. it. Yeah, that's yep. the most. And it's every time it happens. It's <laughs> like, so what I do is um, I ask Proust questions. There are 35. I only choose 10 for each author. If you don't like it. it, you if you don't like the question, you just I'm say allowed pass. to say f -O. Oh, oh, yeah. Or you say, say fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try not to say the. F word. I but I'm curse probably, a lot. I'm probably going to say it like by like question three, just because you're well, you're lost. We're, we'll be we lost from, in our little bubble. <laughs> lost in our bubble. Also, we're both from like the East Coast, so uh, those words, and I'm Irish. Uh, okay, so I'm Scottish. Okay, yeah, we're we're total cussers. So it's just as we're they cussers. call us. Cussers. We're just cussers. We're just redheaded cussers. <laughs> I need that as a tattoo. Okay. That's Shoot funny. I like that. Off. I like that. Love it. So the reason I chose to do this is I, um, I love Vanity Fair magazine and that, cause they're very specific and everything they do is, is I'll use that word again, is exquisite. They're mm -hmm. not just advertising things. There's reasons that they're doing everything. And the Proust questionnaire came around in 1890, so a long, long time ago. So, it, it, no, it's a classic. And, like, you just keep saying it, and I keep getting chills because I know the questionnaire, but I also know that I don't know which 10 questions you're going to ask me. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm all ready. But uh, I just want to say this. They can be used to learn more about somebody's character, and I do believe if you are learning about an author during an interview and you find them interesting, alluring, which you will already have fallen in love with Jennifer by now, but you will later for sure. If you haven't yet, you will you start too. reading the books like that, that, that just happens. The support starts because you kind of get this camaraderie going, but there's also the fact that you can use as an author. I can, um, if I, because I am ch putting one of my books into fiction, one of my stories into fiction, because everybody wants us to still be together. So I'm like, oh, I think I know who you're talking about. And yeah, we will talk about this in, yes, in, yes, in yes. private time. Yes, <gasps> yes. So I'm going to make it where we stay together. Um, so you can actually ask this of your characters in your book. So you get to know them better, which is so interesting. I had someone who was stuck on a character. I said, ask them the Proust questions. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my God, you totally got me out of my spot, out of my way. So it was perfect. I love this. So my first question, which, I, again, I'm only asking 10, are what is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, perfect happiness is well, it's going to sound like really weird and random. My husband and I, who is my artistic partner, my dance partner, uh, we are doing a waltz in an abandoned lunatic asylum, peeling paint on the walls, feeling the energy around us. And somehow our little dog Tubby is like watching us and not misbehaving. <laughs> that's Fair. beautiful. I'm like, that's beautiful. I love and, that question. I'm like, Oh, what would that be? What would that moment be? I, I mean, that's gorgeous. And, uh, when I've seen, cause I've watched your dancing on YouTube and I'm addicted to one of them and I don't know which song it is, but where you go back on his back, and you have, you point your toe out. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, I mean, I've sent that picture like everybody. <laughs> oh my god, that that seems only mildly creepy. <laughs> but <laughs> but it is a little bit. I love that's that. the so, most powerful dancing. 
and here's what I'm, I'm just going to say one little tiny thing about our dancing before we move on. Uh, we don't choreograph anything. We only improvise. That's amazing. So it's just this incredible, and that's why, like, oh, your idea of perfect happiness, of course it's about this because it's uh, the incredible trust we have in each other and also it's artistic so freedom. Yeah, it's natural. It's organic. And also, I, he's I, hot. I, huh? I said, also, he's hot. Well, you're hot too. So, like I the both you. of you together, it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's just you know, um, you make a great pair. It's just wonderful, and you could feel the love, and that to me is the most beautiful part of it. Uh, is that you can feel the love, and it's it's nice to know that your friend is so loved. I mean, that's oh, what you want for them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So oh it's per gosh. it's perfect. Thank you. You're so sweet. Okay. Uh, Question no okay. I'm like, if we're now, counting down from 10, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, now we're on to number two. I don't know. Uh -huh. We can go 10, 90. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, which living person uh -oh. do you most admire? Oh, my gosh. Um, I know. That's a tough one. This is really, oh, this is really hard. Which living person do I most admire? I love that it's living. Yeah, that's because that like it changes everything. Yes. And most admire. I feel like this could change on a daily or hourly basis. I agree. Um so as so I'm gonna say, like right now, this very moment, the living person um I most admire. You know, I, right, no, you no. know, I put $500 in your PayPal account to say it's me, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Annie McDonald. Uh, okay. So living person. I'm going to, and I have a complicated relationship with her, but I am actually going to say my mother, not just because it's mother's day, oh. but I know how special that is. But um, she's had, and I'm not going to go into it, she's had a lot of trauma in her life. Wait, things I can't describe, things that I don't want to describe, but she actually has the, um, the most incredible will to live. So I don't, so I'm just going to say right now, our complicated relationship, I'm going to call her that right now and mic drop. Like I just, <laughs> I can't oh. go more into it because I'll start crying. Uh, but I'm going to say her right now, my mom. I think that's wonderful. So, you know, that this, this question, that the next question I, I love, um, what has been your greatest extravagance? so far in your life oh uh travel definitely travel it's why we are in debt uh <laughs> and and we don't regret any of it so greatest extravagance i in mean our life. your last vacation was out of this world they're all so crazy and good um we travel at the very cheapest time of year to go to any country so we do things very minimally but then one thing per trip, we just say, well, we're going to spend the money on this. Right. So I'll say um, the most extravagant. I'm just going to go with the last one. We, uh, in Budapest, we went to oh. a place called uh, the New York City Cafe or the New York Palace Cafe, known as the most beautiful cafe in the world. And it it was beautiful and the service was amazing, but we bought the most expensive regular lemonade without alcohol in it and <laughs> just had desserts for lunch. So we oh. drank uh, like lemonade that cost like $30 and, and ate dessert and looking in this place that looks like you are in Versailles. Oh my gosh. And we're just like, I can't believe we're just eating. Like, I'm like, why is this 
lemonade, $18. Then I took one sip and I'm like, it's the best lemonade I've ever had. Lemonade. Right, right, right. It makes it worth it. I'm going to tell you, um, my nephew, Adam, I took him to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show for Halloween and I had never seen it. He had never what? seen it. Uh, we were and <laughs> we were the only two dressed up besides the two drag queens that were running it. And um, I didn't even know you could not dress up. For I Horror. know. I thought everyone had to dress up. So I was Morticia. It, I was looking good. Love I was it. an overweight Morticia. I was an older Morticia. With Just, the walker. It was hysterical. <laughs> love it. Um, when we're not live, when we're not recording, I will send you a picture of Roman and I from our dance studio in the before times before COVID. We did a Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, ball. And we definitely dressed up. And like Roman might not have been wearing a shirt. Oh, I love this. He oh, might. This I know. I'm like, so I'm going to send that. Yes, to you, yes, like... please. I must see. I must see. <laughs> You're like, I must see that. So it's like, so funny. It's like, must. I have crushes on some of my friends' husbands. As you I, I mean, who knows that? You know, I never haven't met them. But it's like, the they're thing. Like, I have crushes on so many people uh, women, men, pets. Like, uh, like I'm painting. sorry. Like, yeah, like some pets, I'm, I'm, I'm the same thing. I save pictures of them. I mean, I'm in love with Michelle Rodriguez from Fast and Furious. Well, first of all, she's very hot. So she's that is very hot. That's very hot. Um, so that is completely appropriate. And I <laughs> am in, I'm in love with this weird possum. Not in a sexual way, but I am in love with this possum that I follow on Instagram. And then right. like one day the possum obviously not a possum just a person like commented back to me and i'm like oh, my favorite possum <laughs> and then i was just like it's you know it is what it is <laughs> i i think it's great i and i think it comes from just being a loving person yes. I, I don't think it i don't think it comes from anything else other it's than it's nothing that. gross like i've fallen oh yeah a flower it's, or a tree too i'm just like that's the most beautiful thing i've ever seen <laughs> I, I, so I totally agree. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, like Kira Knightley, like when she when I first saw her, I was like, oh my god, the way she spoke and everything. My husband would say, Your girlfriend's back on TV. <laughs> so uh my husband and I just recently watched the Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice with Matthew McFadden, and we jokingly called that movie, Oh, my movie girlfriend, his movie girlfriend, and both of our movie boyfriends. <laughs> and again, you, I love and Rupert Friend. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. So they, because of him, I watched that Homeland show just yeah. because, like, I needed. It's a more. slippery slope when you're just like, I just need more from you. Yes, 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 exactly. Oh my god, that's amazing. Okay, so um, on what occasion do you think you would? This is a weird question. You might pass. On what occasion do you think you would you would actually tell a lie? Uh, to protect somebody I loved. When and where were you happiest? When and where was I happiest? Um, oh my gosh. I'm going to say something... So for a long time, I lived in the Midwest. Oh, you in, did? In Columbus, Ohio. And I went there for a relationship that did not work out. But that is also where I met Roman. Oh. So everything works out for a reason. But he and I were really into like urban exploring. So that's why I'm like, oh, an abandoned lunatic asylum, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> one day... And we were not even dating yet. We were just best friends okay. and dance partners. And we went into, this is such a silly story. We went into like a, like a sewer drain. I know that sounds disgusting, but it was like, <laughs> like a tunnel <laughs> under the city filled with water and rats and graffiti. And we were in there and we were taking pictures. And I just remember feeling like so... Like, I finally was with somebody who understood me. 
Right. And he it jokingly said the words because we weren't dating yet. He went, I bring you on the best dates, don't I? As we were like ankle <laughs> deep in like disgusting rat sewer water. That's and, so. But weirdly, that's so that cool. is like, that's the moment that I said to myself, what if somebody could actually love me for me? It's, even if we're so just true. friends, even if, and it was just like, we're taking pictures on our phone of graffiti and our feet are wet. And it was just, it was so beautiful. Like, I wish I had said something else now, like when we were in Venice, Italy, when we did blah, blah, blah. Uh, but no, no it's I, a, think that's, I think a, that's beautiful. In an underground tunnel in Columbus, Ohio. But like, I'm thinking like, have have you been to New York City? Oh yeah. To do these, to do these types of tours? No, because it's, uh, no, because it's really hard to find legitimately abandoned places in New York. Oh. Well, when I worked there, people after work would like go to places that were like, they were playing a movie at the top um, yeah. of a building, but you had to like go through like what you're talking about yes. to get there. And, uh, and you sat on like pillows to watch the Love movie. It. It I will say just... one time we danced in New York City. Um, <gasps> we were performing at, um, and we were <sighs> part of the summer Shoshama Arts Festival. So we were performing at the Urban Garden Room across the street from Bryant Square Park. And it was like a six hour long term dance piece. And right. Anne Hathaway was there at one mo moment and I we made eye contact. I burst into tears immediately, broke character, like just like, oh my God, it has my and she mouthed, I love you. And then I mouthed, I love you too. And was then she Roman beautiful? she was of course she is. Oh she was perfect. God. She had like that little like pixie cut because it was like shortly after the filming of Lay Miz. So like her hair was just growing out. Um and that was also another time that I was just very happy, but probably not as happy as being in the sewer. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's truly. Which talent would you most like to have that you singing. don't have right now? Oh, Sorry? No. <laughs> singing. Being a singer. Everybody says that. And I'm going to tell you something. I sing all the time and I don't sound that good, but I don't care. Oh, I sing all the time too. And I know it's not good. Yeah, but I send it to people. <laughs> I send it to people. I, I, I serenade people. And I love it. Yes, yeah, singing. Well, it's good for, and it's, I'm supposed to sing because of my voice. It's real. yeah. Like, so I, I think like when I was like a child, before my lungs got really bad, I had better breath support. Like when I was like actively doing theater, I never did musical theater. That's a huge difference. Um, but uh, that is interesting. Yeah, that's, singing, that is singing, singing. That's even a lot. just that's... like a kind of fun show tune. Oh, you know. Oh, like and, I want to sing so cabaret. <sighs> like that's. I'm like. If I could ever be somebody, it would be somebody who had the vocal range to play Sally Bolts and Cabaret. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That's amazing. I I really I'm in love with Moulin Rouge. Oh. That dancing is like great for you and Roman, right? But, but it, so our very first performance that we ever did together was the Roxanne Tango. No, no. Yes. no. Oh my gosh, that's like my favorite. Roxanne. It's so good. good. And, then, and the way they do it. Oh mm -hmm. my. Oh, it's incredible. If that you have a chance to see it, like the I Broadway. Want to see it Broadway. Show, oh. It's so I saw it in its previews in Boston. And I won't lie, I sobbed openly. For three solid hours. The second it started, I was just like overwhelmed with the set. The dancing, yeah. the singing. I was just like crying. Oh, that's like, we, I saw The time. Great Comet before like that went out, that, that got kicked out very, within like three months, I think. But Adam and I were like, thank God we saw it mm -hmm. because the, they were a acting a right around you. My hair looks like a mess. No, I'm like, it's um, mine, so it's mine. I'm like, it looks like, like the rats went at it and, and nobody's oh, here. It's because you were talking me? about rats. <laughs> You brought the rats. You brought the, brought rats. the rats. I was like, oh, my house smells like mice. All right, next question. Okay. 
Who is your hero of fiction? Oh, gosh. And you can take a minute to think about because I have to do something. I'm like, this one's a... That's a tough hero one. Hero of fiction, can this be... Um, oh. It could be someone, something, someone you somebody. wrote, someone, somebody else wrote. So he, okay, my, like an author or the best hero in a book. The best, the best hero in the book. Oh, um, like a character. Okay, so I can't remember his name, and that sounds so stupid. Well, but, I can find it. Out. I can find so, it. So, um, Peter Heller wrote this book called The Dog Stars, which the dog is stars. the probably the most beautiful book I've ever read in my life. It is a post-apocalyptic book, but it's about a man and his dog. And he just like flies a plane over like the kind of the end of the world. And there's some families and then, and it's about him losing everything, finding hope and this amazing relationship with his dog. So the dog stars, honestly, I, um, read it three times i broke a kindle when i read it the first Ah, time ah. because something happened that i'm not gonna spoil but i was so overwhelmed and i was riding on the exercise bike like i was reading on the exercise bike and i dropped my kindle and the screen shattered oh i just i'm sorry to say this but i love you because (laughs) diana why paul wrote this book uh i can't i can't think unsaid things things unsaid one or the other. Uh, it's 2015. I'm reading the book. I throw it at the wall. Right? I was and like, I, I say, can't believe what? I just broke my Kindle. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm glad. I'm, like, I, in the middle of a book. So I, I, immediately I had to, like, go on my computer, buy myself a new Kindle. Then I bought the book of paperback. And then <laughs> um, and then years later, um, Roman and I listened to the audio book. It's written in such a beautiful way. It's like um, it's some of it's written the like Dog Stars by whom? Peter Heller. Okay, but it's uh it's life changing. I'll have to I'll have to read it because I you like, like if, and you it's a dog story. I I mean, I mean who doesn't love that? I know. Like, yeah, please who is, everybody. give me a book with a dog. <laughs> I right? think well, I have two more questions. Okay. Um, what Love are it. your favorite names? That's oh, a t- that's an interesting question for an author. This, you know what's so... F- okay, so my... Some of these are going to be names I've already used in books. Okay. Um, but I love the name Alice. Okay. I love... Um, um, alphabetically, uh, Alice. I like Agnes. I like Do Edna. You really? Agnes. I like, yeah, Agnes. I did write about an Agnes, and she. I hated her at first when I started writing her, and then I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're the best character ever." Um. So, <laughs> the, and then that's when I fell in love with the name. Yeah, Agnes, Edna. I like really like kind of like weird old fashioned names. Ruth is my grandmother's are older. name. Yeah, maybe because you like you write about ghosts, right? So they're yeah, so like they've got to be. Maybe they they maybe they're dead. <laughs> yes, uh, but yes, I should, yes, I should probably do some man names. Um, I'm gonna okay. I'm just gonna full blown do all of my dad's stuff. Andrew, James, and um, and I, it, I'm not gonna be a horror person if I don't say Edgar. <laughs> also, I really love the name Simon, and I know you. Which way say that again? Simon, it's Simon. Oh, Simon! I know. One more question. I don't know which one to ask you. So I'm going to give you three questions, and you can tell me which one you want to answer. Oh gosh! All right. What is your greatest regret? How would you like to die? What is your motto? Mm. So the first one is, what is my biggest regret? Your greatest regret. Mm -hmm. Uh, How would I like to die and what is my motto? Can my motto be something that somebody else wrote? 
but I, but it, I mean, it yeah. really inhabits me. Okay, my okay. motto would be uh, a line from the Sylvia. I have two. I'm already, I'm already breaking up. Look, I have three in my book for myself. Okay, I like so, um, and these are things. So this is two of my favorite lines of poetry. One, you're gonna get completely why I say it, and it's Sylvia Plath's from Lady Lazarus, and it says. Out of the ash, I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air. Ooh. So, like, as a redhead? Yes. We need that. Um, yes. And my my other motto, and I have this tattooed on my back. It's a line from an Anne Sexton poem that just says. Oh, my God, I love her. She's my favorite. So, this is from her poem, Dr. Martin, and it was, We Are Madness Talking to Itself, Noisy and Alone. I love and how that's you what remember being a writer is. Well, that one I should because well, it's because I, I, on my I still have our hero stories do teach us yes. about overcoming that. Like I used to own a comic book store for a little oh, while. Oh, did you really? Like way back again, like in the Midwest. Oh my um, god! So, like, so I like love... Big Bang. I know people are just like, oh, so you are a real serious nerd, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to be to write what you write. Yeah. And also, I just feel like superhero stories are American mythology. I don't want to say just American, but like, right. so, but Spider-Man, Superman, all of this is American mythology. Yes. It is stories of overcoming adversity, of being, choosing to be good when you could be anything, yes. but you choose to be good. Uh, let's tell everyone you also have classes there's so many things that Jennifer offers this world. Uh, yeah, you know, so I, I obviously uh, locally where I live in New Hampshire, I teach ballroom dance a few days a week. I have been uh, co-teaching with Diane Zinna, a generational grief writing class. I know. Oh. And um, I or she or we might be doing other things in the future. Wow. So I would That's just say, like, keep an eye out. You're um, a great pairing. We work well together. What you teach is um, so much more advanced. Um, it's it's very needed in the world today, it, especially any writer. Any writer can take these classes. Yes, and beginner writers, advanced part. writer. And I think, you know, um, yeah, it's just, it's been an incredible experience kind of and again, the grief writing community is amazing. And I'm part of the horror writing community and the crime writing community, but there's like something very raw and beautiful and tender about the grief writing community. So I just. I, I can't explain it. Um, I've been in counseling since I lost my best friend when I was 15, uh, really 18. I went to college and I started getting a counselor because my, my family didn't do anything for me. And um I, I mean, I'm 53 and I'm still going to counseling, but there will be pieces that I will write in the class. And like my survivor's guilt is completely gone, yeah. completely gone because of this and hearing other people's stories. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful community and, um, it I really love is. it. And I and feel it's like it's free. just like it's free. So this, I mean, but, like, you know, people make donations, but then she takes the money around and she uses it for people in the group. Mm -hmm. So it's just such a lovely experience. Uh, you can't, you can't, it, it's so, such reciprocity. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so beautiful. So uh, I want to say thank you so much, Jennifer. You, you are Amy. such an amazing person to the world. And that's why I wanted you, um, to do the interview with me because I want to shine a light on you because Thank you, you, like, you glow like you. Batman. Like, yes, like the bat signal. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm ready. I'm here. You know, I think it's great. So everyone go grab one of her books and then you will be reading them all. Follow her on Vox Vomitas and yes, her website. Podcast. Yeah. Everything. Which is your name. Yep. Jennifer Ann Gordon .com. Perfect. Easy -peasy. Perfect. So just make sure you follow her. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day and happy Mother's Day. Happy you Mother's have a beautiful day. dog. I'm glad you and I were able to spend some time together today. Me too. 
Me too. So I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your celebrations. Love you. I love you too. Bye-bye.